Nuggets and Lakers coming up. The Lakers uh, beat the Pelicans for the second game in a row, basically two playoff games, pseudo playoff games, so that the Lakers could get the opportunity to be in the eighth spot in the play-in tournament and then play for the seventh spot by uh, the Pelicans, who dropped from six to seven because the Suns won, uh, which then, with their loss to the Lakers, uh, ended in a tie, which the Suns had the tiebreaker with the Pelicans. Zion played very good in the second game. The first game, he looked a little intimidated by LeBron, which he has also in the in-season tournament and at other times. Um, I have another video on that if you want to see that up on the uh, YouTube channel as far as, you know, our players deferring to LeBron. Some of the younger players, sometimes you see them kind of in shock and awe the first couple times they play LeBron. And I think Zion's had that happen to him a couple times where he's like, oh, my God, LeBron's guarding me. Like, you know, this is crazy, you know. And I'm sure it takes time to get over that as a player. I mean, I, play, I played a long time in basketball and there'd be players that were, you know, the number one player in our conference or whatever. And, you know, it'd be kind of like, oh, wow, this guy is really good. Like when you get on the court with him and it takes you a minute to kind of recalibrate and go, oh, yeah, but it's just another game. You got to guard him. You know, you got to do all these things. So I get it. But um, so the first game kind of looked like that, that they had played, I think it was on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, the uh, Lakers come in and it's a grinder, grinded out game. The Lakers give up a lead. Um, Darvin Ham, you know, I, I think he needs to stop with the let's take all the starters out every time we get up by 20 because then you give up the lead, especially in the playoffs. You know, I understand in the in the middle days of February why you would do something like that to try to preserve your guys for the long run for the marathon. But now they are in the sprint, as LeBron said the other day. Um, so I've heard a lot of different things online. Obviously, you know, people go with trends right online and they go with what they think is going to be the majority. And of course, Vegas also heavily favoring the Nuggets in the series. Plus, the Nuggets have home court. Uh, their last eight, nine games against the Lakers haven't been very competitive, uh, where the Lakers, you know, will stay in at part of the game and then kind of get blown out toward the end when it becomes an execution based uh, exercise, uh, which there's a lot of Jamal Murray, yoga pick and roll, kicking to guys like Gordon and Murray, who, uh, who've who been making their shots, or excuse me, uh, Porter, um, who've been making their shots. Uh, obviously, horrible situation with his brother, uh, Jonte, uh, who just got banned for life for being a part of gambling, giving out information, and betting against his own team, who actually won those games, so he's not even good at betting. Uh, but apparently, John T. Porter, the the uh, brother of uh, Michael Porter Jr., who's on the Nuggets in the series, um, was playing for the Toronto Raptors on a two-way contract, uh, made somewhere around $22,000 in bets, and uh, bet his own NBA career away because Adam Silver's not going to have NBA players trying to affect the game in any way uh, that matters, right? So really important not to do things like that um, if you're any kind of professional sports player, despite the gambling being a sponsor. Um, of a lot of sports and even there being teams in Vegas, although gambling goes on at a lot of places outside of Vegas, but you can argue that gambling really, you know, the capital is Vegas as far as just the perception of it, um, sports betting, sports books, all that kind of stuff in almost every casino in Vegas um, and a lot of other places too, but especially Vegas, you know, um, that's, that's a really tough situation. And I hope uh, John Tay gets a chance to really look at this point in his life and go, you know, that was probably not smart. And, um, you know, maybe he can play overseas. You know, maybe he can play in the Olympics. I don't think anybody will want to touch him or sign him for a little while right now because of all the scrutiny that will go along with this NBA ban. It doesn't happen very often, especially from Adam Silver, who's generally considered to be on the player side of most issues. But um, he is uh, he is not going to put up with this crap uh, at all. You know, and the fact that, uh, you know, it came out, I'm sure Michael Porter's uh, in not in a great mental spot right now, but hey, the Nuggets have to go play. I don't know if Jamal Murray's still in a minutes restrictions with his recent return from some injury issues, um, but it doesn't really matter. Here we are, right? The Nuggets record in the last month or so has not been horrible. It's not been the best they've ever played, but they've been playing pretty solid basketball. They dropped a weird game to the Spurs that kind of set this up where if not, they'd probably been the number one seed and the Lakers might be playing either the Timberwolves or the Thunder right now, but that didn't happen. And so, all this to say, that all brings us to where we are, right? Lakers end up as the seventh seed with what happened with the Pelicans. Zion out now for the game tonight that ultimately will be against the Kings, which I think the Kings will win because Brandon Ingram is just coming back from an injury. CJ McCollum has been playing horrible because he's not wide open without Damian Lillard over there to draw an extra guy. Um, and he's getting a little bit older, too, um, as far as McCollum goes, even though he's a really good leader for that Pelicans team, that group. 
Um, but now Zion pulled a hamstring. Apparently, that's why he left the game against the Lakers on Tuesday. And, um, you know, or some level of pulling a hamstring. There's different grades of a hamstring pull. So I don't know how severe it is, but they said at least a couple weeks, it looks like. Which means that even if they did somehow win the game against the Kings tonight, they would probably have a really hard time keeping up with a really fast team like the Thunder, which is the team you would match up. Whoever wins the game against the, uh, the Kings and the Pelicans tonight will then get the number one seed in the West, which is the Thunder in a seven-game series. Uh, and obviously the Thunder have home court. So that's going to be an interesting uh, dynamic. Um, but as far as the Lakers and Nuggets go, I've heard so many things about, oh, well, you know, this and that, and it was a sweep last year, but, oh, it was a close sweep and so many different sides of the coin. I think people are missing some of the finer points of what's going on in this series, which is, what happened last year? Last year, the Lakers made a Russell Westbrook trade in the in the middle of the season. They went on a run. They had all these parts together, but Schroeder and D'Lo were having some issues in the backcourt because D'Lo was kind of like, hey, I'm the scoring guy. I should be in there. And Schroeder's like, yeah, but I can lock people up. And obviously, they were having some issues, which is what ultimately led to Schroeder signing with Toronto and then getting traded midseason to the Nets. Um, we all like Schroeder. He's been on the team a couple times. You can argue he fumbled the bag or whatever and whatnot but um you know we kind of wished shooter would have came back so we could have ran the same squad back but it kind of worked out for lakers because they ended up with dinwiddie and gave vincent instead um at different times they got vincent kind of in the immediate wake of realizing shooter wasn't coming back now for those of you who don't know i know gabe vincent just came back from an injury and laker fans are still kind of getting used to the fact that he's there at all um he played a little bit better in the last game he's starting to get his legs under him a little bit so getting your legs under you means that your your fatigue level um is getting to the point where it's not affecting things like your shot because when you first get out in an nba game it's moving really fast and no matter even if you're a pro who's played it all the time if you haven't been playing lately and even practice doesn't simulate what a real nba game is as far as just the amount of effort that's required on every movement every play constantly so it wears you out. So these guys have to get to the point where they're so conditioned to where their body, just like anything else you do physically in life, is going to be to a point where you can handle all of that. Your stamina is there. Your body endurance, your muscle endurance is a big thing, too, because you're really pushing it. Um, you have to make sure you're constantly hydrated and constantly you know, eating the right things at the right times throughout the day. You have to make sure that all these things are happening correctly so that you can perform at the level you need to. Plus, you're training and recovering constantly as far as weightlifting goes, as far as practice goes, all these things, right? And then you add another level to that by actually playing in games. So Gabe's finally getting to the point. Why is that important? Because Gabe Vincent played really well against Jamal Murray uh, when he was with Miami last year. Yes, Miami lost. And Denver uh, was the champion. But if you add a guy like Gabe Murray and what he did in that series against Miami, and you put that and insert it to where basically Schroeder was um, um, last year in the Lakers series, then you have a lot more of an interesting series, right? The Lakers, people say it's a close sweep because they only lost by a few points all four games. But they got out-executed down the stretch, right? And Jamal Murray had everything to do with that, right? As LeBron said in his comp press conference the other day when people were asking him questions, um, the, the real difference is, is that Jamal Murray um, is the closer, right? So you have Jokic, who's going to basically lead the team for 46 minutes. And those last two minutes, Jamal Murray is going to do everything they can because they're going to throw the kitchen sink at Jokic to stop him from beating them down the stretch. And that means Jamal Murray is the guy that has to take over, whether it's the pick and roll, pick and pop, uh, rub screens, uh, you know, finding guys down low in the dunker spot like Gordon and Porter or in the corner like Gordon and Porter or KCP. Um, KCP is another huge spot. Bruce Brown was the guy that was really harassing D'Lo last year, and he's now not there. Um, another important guy that contributed last year when it was really not advantageous to the Lakers was Jeff Green, who's also no longer with Denver. Now, they've had other guys like Braun step up, and some of their bench has kind of grown into those roles after seeing what they looked like last year when they were a little bit more green to the league um, and seeing what guys like Brown and Green did and learning from them and how to how to be in those roles with the with the Nuggets as, as veterans, right, and playing more like veterans, even though they're still like guys like Christian Braun or, you know, a couple years in the league now. So I think all those things are, are big. <clears throat> What I think is even bigger than that, though, is that the difference is, is the conference finals, the Lakers were kind of grinding to get in, and then they grinded to get to the conference finals last year um, by beating a really tough Warriors team. Um, the weird series with Memphis that had all the drama and stuff, even though you could argue it wasn't really that tough from a, a competitive standpoint for the Lakers to win. Um, and then, you know, really unloading the tank to, to get rid of the Warriors, who at that time, it was they had just won a title they were the year before, so that was not the easiest thing. They got rid of the defending champs last season when nobody said they could, which is the same situation they find themselves in right now, right, where they're going up against defending champs and nobody says that they can. 
why could the Lakers beat the Nuggets? <clears throat> well, number one, I think, is that LeBron was coming off a really serious foot injury, probably rushed back and probably wasn't really prepared to play the kind of volume and minutes he needed to to beat a team like Denver last year. He tried and tried, but you could tell his lift just was not there because of his foot injury. And obviously, the last few games, we've seen that his lift is just fine, right? This year, I mean. Um, if you go back and look at the Pelicans games, he was his lift was fine. That was not the problem, right? Why is that important? <clears throat> because in the first round, there are more, more there's more time between games, right? You have one or two multiple days, sometimes even three between games, depending on how it lines up with the TV schedules and all of that in the first round. And there's a bunch of different games going on, so they're more spaced out because you have 16 teams competing. When you get to the conference levels, it's every other day because the TV schedule gets a lot tighter. There's only four teams, so it's every other day. You're trading off east-west, east-west, um, and it goes a lot quicker that way, which is also kind of what you know makes you a champion is you have to endure that. But when you're an older guy like LeBron and even kind of an injury play guy like AD, that extra day or two between games is so enormous. And I think that it's going to give LeBron so much time for treatment and stuff that that's really going to help in itself even this series out a little bit. You could tell that at the end of some of those games where the Lakers got out executed at the end last year in those sweep in that sweep, that there's probably two of those games that if LeBron had been a little bit fresher, I think it very easily could have been two two. You know what I mean? And so I think that alone, add in the fact that they have some more versatility on their roster, Lakers this year, Dinwiddie and uh, Gabe Vincent are guys that are big shot makers. I know they don't always make big shots with Lakers because that's not their role, but we're going to see. We're about to find out how big they are. Gabe has proved it with Miami a bunch of times that he can come out there and be that guy when you need him to. So if D'Lo does struggle, then they have other options to go to that aren't just little Dennis Schroeder, right, who's going to get pushed around by a bigger guard, even though he's a good defender ultimately, and he's a pestering defender. But you need a guy with some length. Dinwiddie has that. You know, Gabe Vincent is a very good defender at staying in front of people, and he's finally healthy. The other thing is Vando has been said that he might be back as soon as a week uh, from today. Now, it's going to take him a little time to get himself into game shape, but even a few minutes of Vando out there on a guy like Jamal Murray would be huge. Just from a difference, even if he can't give you anything on offense, the Lakers have offense. That's not the problem. Now, the other factors are if D'Lo plays any better, he averaged like six points and like two assists last year in, the, in that series. That's probably the worst of his career. If he does any better than that, any better, that pretty much will help you also even the series. So if you combine a bunch of these factors for the Lakers, LeBron's a little healthier and they have a little bit more time between series. D'Lo's probably not going to only average six points a game and play the worst of his life. Jamal Murray also played the best series he's ever played, including the bubble when he completely went off uh, against the Lakers last season. And he's not completely healthy and completely recovered. And he's still, I think, on a minutes restriction now, coming off of an injury this season. All those things combined. So for the Nuggets to win, they're going to have to win all their home court games, for sure. And they're going to have to really have... Um, the guys that they need to hit shots. So KCP and those little wide open corner threes, he's going to have to hit all of those, right? Michael Porter Jr. is going to have to hit all his, which he's been doing really good at doing that this year, so there's no doubt he can. Um, and Aaron Gordon's going to have to dominate inside when whenever AD's not on the floor. And when AD is on the floor, I hate to say it, but the Lakers are probably not going to want him on Jokic a lot. Um, and the reason for that is Jokic is probably going to score either way. So what you really want to do is keep your rim defender in because the Denver Nuggets are a lot like the Lakers. They like to get themselves into positions where they can score in the paint. And if you have AD on, say, Aaron Gordon, you can live and die with Aaron Gordon hitting a couple threes on you from spacing AD out to the three-point line. But at least that way AD can stay relatively central to the paint and help stop the drives of Murray and the drives of other people um, because... You know, LeBron and Rui together maybe can at least, you know, put something in front of Jokic. I still think the Lakers should have went out and got another big guy for this exact scenario. If it was bringing Dwight back or because of Dwight's legal trouble, if not, then they could have went out and got Cousins or somebody that was just a big, experienced body that can just stand in front of Jokic. And the other thing is foul trouble. If you put AD on Jokic the entire time, like, certainly he'll play a little bit on him. No doubt about that. But... If you put him on the whole time, he's going to get into foul trouble, and that's going to that's the Lakers can't win without AD on the floor in this series. It's just not going to happen. We can sit here. I mean, they might be able to get away with a few minutes of Jackson Hayes in there and do okay and play even, which would really be a win for the Lakers if they could do that. But without AD on the floor, uh, the Lakers are in big trouble in this series because you know there's a lot of length with Gordon 
and Porter and Jokic and the other guys they have on the bench, like you're not going to be able to get away with that. Um, so the Lakers have got to figure out a way to keep AD on the floor, um, keep LeBron as fresh as possible. So if you have a guy like AD or, or uh, excuse me, a guy like D'Lo or Reeves and they're and they start getting into a flow and going, I would take LeBron out and be like, hey, let that guy cook. Um, let's use these minutes to get keep LeBron as fresh as possible. And then when that guy falls off or they start figuring it out, then we put LeBron in and throw LeBron at him, right? And that'll keep LeBron fresh and keep you in the game. But what the Lakers can't do is have these lulls that they tend to have in these games where they're for 20 minutes, they can't score for some reason that nobody understands, right? Because they're, they get in, they can't hit any of their shots or Torian Prince is launching shots that don't make sense, right? Lately, the Lakers have been playing a lot better, taking really good threes, threes that aren't hugely like at half court, but are actually like at the three point line that makes sense. Um, because the further you get away from the basket, the less efficient you are. No matter who you are, it could be except for maybe Dame Lillard, but anybody but Dame Lillard and maybe Steph Curry, anybody else, the further you get away from the basket, the less efficient you are. And no matter how good of a shooter you are, D'Lo needs to keep confident, and he needs to keep that. I love his trigger threes where they just throw it to him, and he just throws it directly in and doesn't think about it. He needs a lot of that in this Denver series. He needs to not be thinking about it at all. He just needs to go, react, do the game plan, do what they need to do, and stay on the floor defensively. He has got to. St There's going to be times he's on Murray, and he's got to figure out a way to stay with Murray. If you reach and you get out of position, Murray's going to get a layup or a wide open three, and you're going to be in trouble. And then that's when you end up getting benched like last year where they put in Schroeder. Only this year it would probably be Gabe Vincent because Gabe Vincent proved in the finals last year against Murray that he can hang with Murray. He can hang with him defensively at least enough. You're not going to stop him. Murray's a great player. You're not going to stop him. But Vincent can stay in front of him. He proved that last year. And that was with not as not with a guy like AD behind him to help, right? But AD also has to stay home a lot because of the size and length and him being the only guy of that size and length on the Lakers. He has to stay home because if Gordon goes to the rim, AD's the only guy that can stop it. Porter goes to the rim, AD's probably the only guy that can stop it. If Jokic is anywhere around the rim, AD's the only guy that can even try to contest that. None of the other guys are big enough. Like, Rui's thick, but he's not thick enough to use his body to push those guys away from the basket. LeBron is big and he's strong and he can get away with it here and there, but he is not going to be able to consistently do that. And you don't want to ask him to. So AD has got to be the superstar. And this is the moment where people keep talking about, you know, AD has got to take over and be his team. This is the moment right now. This is it. AD, you have to step up and you have to at least even out, if not succeed Jokic in this series. And if you can do that, the Lakers will become your team. LeBron becomes your second guy. That is a really great second guy to have for anybody, but at you know, almost 40 years old, that's bound to happen, right, eventually, just through the natural course of time. And then you guys can continue to win by elevating your game above these Jokic and Embiid. There's no reason AD should not be an MVP candidate every year. There's no reason why. And he's really close, but he's not talked about in the top five of MVP candidates most of the time. There's no reason for that. He's more talented and more versatile than most of those guys. He has, he can do everything and he can do and so much more because he's so much more of a versatile body. He doesn't have a typical big guy disposition as far as the way his hips and legs move. He has more of a guard mentality because he was a guard until he grew taller later in life. You can use that to your advantage, but there's also going to be times where you have to big guy up and go down there and do the stuff you don't want to do and defend big dudes like Jokic that you're not going to want to defend. This is a series where we're going to see what AD looks like. Is it enough to be a Laker, to have won one championship, and to um, you know just be considered a, a guy that makes a bunch of money and a, and a top 10 player in the league, and is that good enough for AD? Or does he really have the desire deep down to be that dude and to carry the Lakers forward and to carry the franchise and to take over for LeBron and to be that dude. If he does, this is the perfect series. He was the one in the preseason going, oh, well, they talked about me and our daddy and there's all this stuff and me and LeBron talked and we can't wait to go back. It shouldn't take you talking to LeBron to, to want to beat the Nuggets for everything that's happened over the last couple of years. You should want that smoke more than anybody, AD, because you know why? You're more talented than Joker. You're more talented than he is. You are. You're a better defender than him. You can shoot probably just as good as him, maybe not percentage-wise, but you have all the talent in the world to shoot from anywhere. You can dominate inside defensively and offensively whenever you want to, but you got to do it. And you're going to have to do it against the best. And that's how you prove it and overcome it. AD has all the talent and ability to do that in the world. You're going to have to overcome any injury, 
if somebody pokes you in the eye, you're going to have to close that eye and keep going. I'm sorry, but this is the playoffs, and that's how it's got to be. Because if not, then you got to wear goggles and be quiet about how they look fashionably. Nobody cares about that right now. You have got to go out there and prove that you are that dude. That's how you are going to win this series. You've got to be that dude. D'Lo just has to be a little bit better than he was last year. Gabe Vincent has to be better than Schroeder was in his minutes last year, which he already proved he can do when he was with Miami against Murray in the finals last season. And LeBron's already got way more lift than he did at the same time last year. And you guys have more time between games. If you are ever, ever going to beat Denver and have a chance to extend this run with LeBron and AD, it's right now. It's right now. You guys got really lucky. You were able to get into that first play-in game on the last day of the season. You got super fortunate that you got into that position after dropping a couple games. You probably should have won that AD was out of because of his eye thing and refusing to wear goggles to protect them. So, look, you got lucky and you got out of all those situations. You're not just going to luck into beating Denver. You're going to have to go up there and grind them down and take it from them because Denver knows that if they lose to the Lakers right now in the first round, that the dynasty that they're hoping to build right now may never happen. It may never happen if they go out in the first round right now. And they're the higher seed. They are the favorite. They have everything to lose. And the Lakers, you're in the underdog spot. You have everything to win to surprise them, just like you did the former champions, the Warriors last season coming off of a title. You can do that to Denver, but you have to believe that. You have to get Gabe Vincent in there. And and, and if Spencer plays, he's got to play the same kind of ferocious defense on Murray. You guys are going to have to figure out how to handle those pick and rolls and pick and pops. Not allow wide open dunkers under the basket for Jokic to find on amazing passes that just make everybody turn their head and go, wow. AD, you're going to have to man up and play as much as you can on Jokic and not get fouls. Dilo is going to have to just keep being doing what he's been doing this year, including in the last game against the Pelicans where he hit the game winning clutch shot. If Dilo is open, the shot needs to go in, right? And they, they have got to do all these things. Austin's just got to be Austin. Rui's just got to be Rui. You know, if Prince does come in off the bench, then he's going to have to hit shots. I don't really want to see Cam Reddish on uh, on Jamal Murray. I don't want to see that. I want to see they have way too many guards now that are that are good that they can put on Murray that are not going to be a problem when you switch to smaller guys or bigger guys in the pick and roll. They need to take advantage of that. You have to use Gabe Vincent. You have to use Spencer Dinwiddie when Delo's not on the floor or if Delo's becoming such a problem defensively that he can't be on the floor, which is going to be a problem because offensively that means you have to figure out ways to score. Austin can't go into a long drought. LeBron and AD are going to have to score offensively and be really good defensively. It has to happen, and AD has got to be that guy. Point blank, period. You have to outplay Joker at his own game and make them eat their words from last year that you said in the preseason you and LeBron could not wait to do. You better do that because in L.A., when you don't win and you say a bunch of stuff and then you don't own up to it, they will crucify you in the media. It will happen. And you can't feel bad about it because it's all about winning. It's all about winning. Winning one bubble championship with LeBron is not enough, A.D. You want to be a Pantheon legend? You want to be like Pau Gasol, who has two titles and three uh, trips to the finals in his bag? Then you have got to do it right now against the toughest competition. Kobe and Powell had to overcome Boston after losing to them. This is your moment like that with Kobe and Powell against the Celtics, right? This is Denver is your Celtics right now at this point in your career. You beat them once. Then in 2020, they beat them. Then you come back. You lose to them last year, and they won the title. Now it's your turn. Whoever wins this series very well can win the NBA title because the Eastern Conference is not very good. Whoever wins this series is going to be in a great position. The Lakers won't have home court moving forward in any series, even if they do somehow squeak by Denver. But we'll see. The Lakers' chance is they need to get game one. I've heard all these people go, oh, well, you just have to win one of the first two. No. They need game one. They need Saturday's game. Why? Because of the confidence factor. They have been dominated by Denver lately, and they need to get the first one out of the way to show Denver we can do this. Because if the Lakers lose or get blown out in game one in Denver, everybody's going to go, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. And they're just going to hear it and hear it and hear it. And even though they go, oh, we tune that out, we don't listen to that as NBA players. Horse hockey, right? As David Sampson says on Nothing Personal. Shout out to David Sampson, right? They have to 
have to win game one to win this series. The Lakers must win game one because that is the only way. They have got to set a tone and give Denver something to go, oh, crap. You know, we did not do what we needed to there, and they have got to find some way to get past Denver in game one. I don't care if they do it by one point, 20 points. I don't care if it's because AD's dominating or because LeBron's dominating or because D'Lo has a hot night or because Austin does something amazing. They have to win game one, period. If the Lakers have a chance to beat Denver in this series, which there's no reason why they shouldn't, you have so much time between series to recover. You have time before the series going in. There are no excuses. You have every single opportunity. You have Gabe Vincent on your team, who is a very, very good player, as good as anybody we've seen in the playoffs on Jamal Murray. And he's finally healthy, and he finally played good in his last game, so he looks like he's finally there, right? You have it now. The Lakers will never have a better chance with more pieces because of how much they're going to have to pay LeBron moving forward in an extension this year and stuff, they're not going to have better pieces than they have right now. I hate to break it to you, they're not going to do it. Gabe Vincent is signed beyond this year, but they might end up having to trade him or something to create this cap space to keep D'Lo. Or he might end up being the starter, and then you won't have D'Lo, and so you'll lose that piece. Right now, with the pieces they have right now, this is the Lakers shot. Right now, you want to keep this team together and keep moving forward? Right now is your chance, right? You must must do the things that I just talked about. You must limit second chance opportunities, and you you absolutely must help AD on the defensive boards. AD cannot stand there by himself against Gordon, Porter, and Jokic and be the only guy getting rebounds. It cannot happen. The Lakers have got to box out as a team. Everybody is going to have to box out. What does that mean? It's going to mean less transition opportunities, which is going to hurt you. But you can create transition in other ways with steals and with defense and not just with rebounds. The Lakers have to rebound. How does Denver beat you in late game execution over and over? Second chance opportunities. They get offensive rebound after offensive rebound after offensive rebound. Why? Because Gordon is a great rebounder and he's very athletic and he's 6'10". Porter, very good, very athletic, and he's 6'10", right? Jokic is not very athletic, but he's 7 feet tall, right? And he is a big body and can push people around and get to those rebounds. So, other than AD, we know AD can rebound, but Rui, LeBron, y'all better be in there pushing somebody out of the way, right? That, that has to happen. If that doesn't happen and they get four tries every time down, it's going to deflate your defense and it's going to ruin the defensive effort and then it's going to demoralize your team and then nobody's going to think on the team, even though they don't say it out loud, that they can actually win. That's why game one is so vitally important. They have to win game one. They have to win game one. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if it's a dirty, gritty game or hardly anybody can score because it's so mucked up with nonsense and foul calls and whatever. It doesn't matter. Win it. Whatever it takes, you win game one. If you win game one, it changes everything. If you lose game one, then you come into game two with all the pressure on you because you know that when you go back to LA, you're probably not going to win both of those games. So you better win game one because if not, it's setting the tone for a sweep. You win game one. Get it done, Lakers. Get it done, AD. Get it done, LeBron. You'll have time to recover. Whatever it takes in game one, unload it. You'll have more time to recover in this series than you did in the conference finals last year. You'll have a way to figure out how to get game two. And even if you don't get game two, you still got game one, and then you have two games at home. So get game one. That's all you got to do. Get game one right now. The Lakers.